All right. Thanks. That's a warm welcome from the North American Bitcoin Conference. Uh, so, yeah, great. My name is Kathleen Brightman. Uh, my handle on Twitter is Brightwoman. Um, and yeah, 2021 was a great year for the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. I think we could all agree. Um, but in particular, it was great for the Tezos ecosystem. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. But obviously, we're like picking on other themes that uh, uh, all, of, all of the cryptocurrency space has benefited from. So let's see. All right, so what is Tezos? Um, Tezos is a layer one uh, smart contract platform. Uh, it uh, is founded by me and my husband, who is dressed like Nostradamus. That's at a 202012 end of the world party. Um, and yeah, it was proposed in a series of papers from 2014. Um, basically, the motivation for Tezos, uh, or the observation that led to it, is that Bitcoin lacks a mechanism or a forum to upgrade itself. Um, and in 2013, uh, there were a number of different cryptocurrencies proposed. There was Zcash, Litecoin, some of the things that were even launched at this conference. Um, and all of them represented innovations to the cryptocurrency space, um, which is obviously something that's a welcome, uh, you know, welcome, I guess, opportunity. Um, the pity was that every time a new cryptocurrency launches, it has to basically bootstrap its own network effects. And I think, you know, if we're trying to be money in some form, um, what you want to have is, is network effects. So it's kind of hard to manufacture that every single time you want to have a new innovation. And so the idea or the motivation behind Tezos was, in effect, to have a forum for upgrades to be ratified by the community of token holders, as opposed to you know, just a handful of developers the way that it had traditionally been done in open source software. Um, a main tension of this uh, when you're dealing with, I don't know, a web browser, um, obviously, is that you don't have assets pledged to them. And so you're, it doesn't really matter who's running what version of, of uh, you know, a piece of open source software. When it's a ledger that everyone wants to agree upon, however, it's better to have you know, community ratification and consensus. And so as I mentioned, you know, the papers were published in 2014. Um, you know, they anticipated some of the things that happened in 2015, such as, you know, the blockchain civil, uh, Bitcoin civil wars, rather. And then, you know, further down the line, when Ethereum had its um, DAO hack and there was a fork of Ethereum called Ethereum Classic, um, it also anticipated the types of, I guess, governance tensions that led to that. Um, and, uh, you know, basically with Tezos, what you have is a forum for, um, you know, ratifying upgrades through a token holder vote. It's actually a very conservative process. It takes about three months. And uh, to date, uh, since 2018, when a version of the Tezos network was launched, um, you know, the, the blockchain has upgraded eight times um, with a supermajority of token holders. So it's actually a remarkably conservative process. And in fact, last night, uh, a ratification uh, was rejected by the community because it didn't hit the 80% quorum that's needed to go on to its next phase of approvals. Um, but that's kind of boring. Uh, what was cool about 2021 is that basically NFTs uh, kind of became the gateway uh, smart contract for people to learn and know about cryptocurrencies. And uh, you know, in effect, what um, NFTs are is basically a receipt of ownership that lives on a blockchain. It's not a very radical idea, and it's frankly not a very um, provocative use case. It's actually dead simple. Um, but I think what was great about it was that you know, cryptocurrencies for the last five or six years have been talking about you know, upending the financial system and doing all sorts of sophisticated things, which is all fair and good. Um, but NFTs are just fundamentally very fun. Um, they're basically, in effect, you know, just talking about ownership and collectability and you know, basically supporting artists and things like this. Um, and it has a much, much more playful flavor to it. Um, so the Tezos ecosystem really thrived uh, under these conditions, mostly because uh, the Tezos ecosystem became very I, I suppose, artist-friendly. Um, a lot of the top NFT marketplaces are on Tezos, um, namely Hikeknuk and Object.com. Um, so that's been really fun. Um, and then, you know, further, there was a, an experiment with the Banque de France uh, to basically try to do some sort of digital euro um, using the Tezos blockchain, which was obviously super cool. Uh, Ubisoft is now using Tezos to underpin some of its in-game items, um, which has led to a lot of you know, interesting conversations with other gaming companies. Uh, and yeah, I mean, geez, it's, it's good validation. Um, more importantly, though, uh, the whole thesis behind Tezos is basically having upgrades in order to make the blockchain more efficient. And obviously, efficiency can be defined in a number of different ways. Um, but basically, having consensus from the people who own the token in order to like, you know, basically have a sort of technical end or a forum for better technical ends is what we're aiming for. And I think unquestionably, 2020 improved that. 
So what we had was like a tremendous uptick in usage of the network. Um, oftentimes, you know, the Tezos ecosystem will have a large percentage of the number of transactions that Ethereum, which is a far more popular smart contract platform, has. Um, but the actual number of, well, the amount of gas used in the ecosystem, uh, you know, declined precipitously at that time. So in effect, we became more efficient, uh, mostly through the upgrade proposal mechanism, uh, which had a number of technical upgrades, which you know, uh, enabled this to happen. Um, and yeah, so I mean, 2021 was great. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, um, you know, in fact, what we had was uh, a number of community members who had always been very active um, voting on upgrades to the protocol. What we lacked was kind of like uh, a few different hooks uh, to kind of use some of the great engineering that had been built in the past, namely um, some of the developer tools that were, you know, uh, kind of sitting on the shelf waiting for someone to, to use and abuse them. Um, and so what was great about, you know, 2021 um, was that we had, um, I guess, experiments like Hikik Nunk, which I mentioned is a very large NFT art marketplace. So that was actually created at a um, hackathon in Brazil by a young man and a small team, and it quickly became the largest art marketplace or NFT art marketplace by daily active users. Um, and uh, it, it you know, far surpassed expectations. And a big reason that that happened was, in effect, it was a very dead simple website. Um, and uh, a lot of people who flocked to it were um, generative artists who all already knew how to program. And so, in effect, what happened uh, was a, there was scaffolding. And then the people in the community who were also making the art built their own tools on top of it. And so Hikik kind of became a one-stop shop. Um, for better or for worse, uh, you know, the young man who created the, the website decided to shut it down, um, I, I guess, a few, few weeks ago. And uh, within about two hours, an entirely parallel website sprung up. So none of the art was lost, none of the, I guess, uh, aesthetic was lost because it had all been open sourced. And so for me, that's like the true promise of Web3. Um, you know, basically, if, if uh, you know, Jack Dorsey had rage quit Twitter and taken down all of its servers, we'd all be, um, you know, to put it bluntly, shit out of luck. Um, obviously, he can't do that, but, you know, thank goodness he doesn't. And, uh, you know, with Web3, what you have is basically a guarantee for everyone who labors on the internet uh, to basically have recourse um, in the event that there's a governance crisis or there's some sort of um, malfeasance or, I guess, episode um, which, which prompts someone to uh, rethink their commitment to a project, give or take. Um, so I think this is really the future, um, and it really, you know, charms the, well, warms the cockles of my heart uh, that an experiment like this happened on Tezos, um, and that it was on such a popular website to boot. Um, and so, more of that would be great. Um, you know, maybe less drama around it, but uh, certainly it would be nice to have uh, an experiment like this happen again. Um, and uh, we have a number of different, uh, you know. People in the ecosystem who are peering up to, I guess, attract more entrepreneurs to this space. Um, I spoke here in like 2019, and I guess I've been operating in the space in some form for the last five years. And what's been very charming, I guess, as the years go by, is that I see a lot more talent coming into the ecosystem. Um, I think a lot of people were ambivalent about the promise of cryptocurrencies in uh, 2016, 2017. But I think, um, if anything, what the watershed moment in 2021 was for me is that, you know, basically crypto can be fun uh, through NFTs mostly, and uh, crypto can attract like world class talent. And so, um, you know, when I look at the resumes coming into my inbox and I look at uh, the, you know, the types of people I meet at conferences nowadays, um, it's, it's really just um, professionalized in, in some of the best ways, um, but it's still kept an ethos of like, um, I guess, uh, cheekiness and pluck uh, that, that's always been there. So um, I get super excited, especially because I've been locked up for two years, um, you know, when I see folks like this. And uh, we've got a number of different people in the Tezos ecosystem who are, you know, trying to encourage more folks to come in. Entrepreneur First, which is kind of an accelerator out of London, where I live, uh, is doing a program for Web3. So if, by all means, if you guys want to create something new and provocative, like hit them up. Uh, they'll help you raise money, and they'll help you flesh out your idea. Um, there's a number of different applications that are making Tezos more accessible. So we've got Homebase DAO, which is like kind of a DAO in a box uh, solution. We've got SmartPy, which makes it dead simple for someone even as, you know, um, I guess uh, someone even like me to make smart contracts. So that's great. Um, and we've got Kukai and a few other things. So anyway, it's just been fantastic uh, to basically see the growth of the ecosystem. Um, we've got 
Max Verstappen with the, the Tezos logo on his halo. If anyone's an F1 fan, maybe that's the reason you should like Tezos. I don't know. Um, but uh, we've got a few things coming up to the fore. We've got, obviously, more efforts in gaming. I mentioned Ubisoft has a you know, pretty, pretty substantial commitment to the Tezos ecosystem. And that's been a great beachhead for conversations with more uh, gaming companies. We've got a number of innovations in Tezos that harken to DeFi, um, which I think everyone and their mother in this audience has heard about ad nauseum, so I, I won't, uh, I won't you know, belabor that point. Um, a continued presence in the art world, a big coup for us was that in uh, um, Art Balls in Miami in December 2021, uh, Tezos was the preferred, or the Tezos Foundation was the preferred cryptocurrency partner um, there, which was super exciting. Um, you know, basically, we, we had a lot of adoption from uh, companies like Red Bull Racing, Ubisoft, um, Society General uh, in 2021, and uh, like attracts like, and that tends to you know start a very virtuous cycle of um, you know just generally getting better at, at both servicing and uh, creating those opportunities. So um, I, for one, am super excited in general with the cryptocurrency space. You know, it's kind of funny. It's it's a very provocative idea, and um, uh, I, I'm always very charmed to see. Um, people adopt it in new and fun different ways. I think uh, the space has gotten less serious about itself over the last few years, which is also super encouraging. Um, and more importantly, uh, you know, Tesla has seen a lot of adoption in 2021, which obviously is a great boon to me, at least. Um, but uh, thanks very much for, for your time. You know, any complaints, compliments, or confusion, by all means, email me. I'm not sure I'll email you back in a timely fashion, but I'll get to it eventually. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks very much for your time. And uh, you know, yeah. <laughs>